All right, hi, I'm Matt Embry. You're watching Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. Peace. Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. Ladies and gentlemen, Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct, coming at you here, live Chicago at the Riviera. And here I am, sitting next to me is Matt Embry of RX Bandits. How you doing, sir? Can't complain. <laughs> How you doing? Fantastic, man. Now, you're, uh, this tour started October 23rd, so it's only been like the first week, I would say. Uh, how are these shows been yeah, going so far? I don't know what date it is anymore. Yeah, it's uh, November 1st. Oh, I actually do. <laughs> I actually do know what date it is. <laughs> it's Dia de los Muertos. No me digas. Uh, how, how's this uh, tour been going so far? It's great, man. Yeah? Yeah. It's it, been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah, we tried to... Uh, this uh, almost happened in 2010, but um, it did not. And so five years later, made it happen, which is great. Right on. And uh, I mean, with Circus Survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, you guys, your albums are so astounding. Uh, it's just like your live act. Um, how do you guys uh, stay true to, to that live sound? Hmm. You mean, how do we stay true to sounding like we do live on an album yeah i mean you guys when you record you kind of do like a live a full live track or do you guys do separate tracks when you record <clears throat> no we we record um well for most out al most of our albums we record in the same room drums bass guitar both guitars keyboard sometimes at the same time um other times when Choi most of the time he can play both or whatever, but you know, a lot of times you like to like tweak the sounds or whatever, so he'll just focus on guitar or focus on keyboard for that one song. The reason we do that is because I'm a huge fan of old recordings. Um, I, I believe that there's more that's captured than just the sound. Um, you know, the chemistry between the people in the room together making music that they wrote is also important to to be uh, to be there on the record in my opinion you mm -hmm. know so that's why we try to do that mm -hmm. you know there's mistakes um we're not as we're not as uh, strict about it as we used to be uh like like with them the battle begun uh we didn't overdub anything like for uh, as far as like you know the basic tracks if if i screwed up or if, if troy screwed up or any of us screwed up then we just started from the top again uh, you know so Basically, you take one that has the least amount of mistakes mm -hmm. and just roll with it. And, and <laughs> excuse me, we done that. We did that with all the albums since the resignation, except that we did a little more overdubs on Gemini just because of the situation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of patience with that, I think, when it comes to recording too. Like, tons of patience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, it comes out of impatience for us. Mm -hmm. We're just like, fuck it, leave it. Mm -hmm. You know. Like, I don't want to record this again. Exactly. Just three times. It's like three times if you don't get it, it doesn't make the album. Exactly. Now, being on the road, uh, I saw a video the other day of uh, you doing your warm-up, pre-warm-up before uh, the Montreal show. And you were doing some, like, karate, some sort of tai chi. Not really sure. Is that your usual pre-warm-up ritual, or do you have something else? Or was that just a... Uh... <laughs> uh, uh I don't know. Joe and I like to dance around. Mm. You know, it's not really. Uh, I don't get to do it every day, but you know, we're charging the speaker over there, so something will probably go down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, Fugazi is probably like one of my favorite, if not my favorite, like all-time rock band. You know, mm -hmm. especially growing up, and um, <clears throat> obviously for f fans of Fugazi, we obviously draw a lot of influence from them. And uh, like they have a lot of songs that get me pretty juiced. Mm -hmm. So you know that was uh, I didn't not I didn't, Joe, Joe and I didn't know that was being filmed. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Definitely not Tai Chi. Yeah. You know, just kind of <laughs> like karate chops, just getting hyped. Yeah. Yeah. You know, stretching. Yeah. Push ups are always good too. Y and yeah. yoga in general. Yoga is really good for you. Yeah. Mm, I don't do it. I probably should. One day. Be less. Yeah, plenty of time. Yeah. Um. And uh, you stay busy, man. I mean, you are, you know, in the, 
Sounds of Animal Fighting, um, many other acts, you know, state radio you've jammed with. And uh, I was just wondering, you know, what motivates you to keep, you know, writing and touring all these years? What really keeps it going? Because I enjoy living this Peter Pan lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And I don't want it to stop. <laughs> See, I'm still wearing my pajamas. Hell yeah. You think you can go to the work in the office wearing pajamas? <laughs> Hell no. No, sir. <laughs> there you go, brother. <laughs> Great answer, man. It's all, it's all because I just want to keep wearing my PJs. Mm -hmm. Does fun. Does Hook ever come in to play? I mean, I've, if you will remember the documentary, the alligator statue <laughs> fell on him. And so I think that was the end of that. And That's true. Which was, you know, confirmed to the audience of anyone who viewed that mm -hmm. by the burp. Yeah. The belch, one, one might say, mm -hmm. of that statue alligator. <laughs> so I never really understood that part of Hook. Really? Yeah, me neither. Because yeah. it's like, it's like, you know, Dustin Hoffman or Captain Hook had him chilling there like, Yo, I beat the alligator mm -hmm. type shit, and the alligator guy's revenge. So he's just like in like some stasis, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But Spielberg was like, ah, by that by that time he was like, ah, fuck yeah. it. <laughs> no, how do we oh, how do we finish this? I'll just have the thing fall on him and then it'll eat him somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that in a really long time. Robin Williams, man, rest in peace. That was a good one, dude. Uh, that's a great movie. Yeah, it is. It's, it's classic, man. I'm like I'm a big fan of like watching movies and then I'll read like all the IMDb shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. And, me too. And um, like I'll read all the silly trivia and all that bullshit. Yeah. Um, but so if you read the IMDb on that, that was like it said that like Spielberg, that was the last movie he said he'd never work with Julia Roberts again. Yes. Yeah. Like, she, she was a was, pain. Like, the worst. The worst. Yeah. Like, she had she had she had like on her writer an assistant that just cleaned her feet only, but wouldn't couldn't speak to her. And all this crazy shit. I was like, mm. what, dude? It's like, you're wrong. not that big. It's just Tinkerbell. Do you remember the late 90s movie Can't Hardly Wait? Totally. Dude, the uh, the kid in that was the little boy in Hook. No. Yeah. The, the, the one who gets like drunk, the really nerdy one, who gets picked on, he ends up singing uh, Paradise City, uh, Guns N' Roses, that one scene when he's, he's like the nerdy kid, kind of the X-Files one. What, how does he dress? He's just like one of the, he had like an X-Files shirt on. It was like the nerdy kids, the three dudes. And he was the he was the main guy, but he's feel, he's the little boy in the hook. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm. It's a really random movie, but <laughs> no, like I remember that because it has like Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes, right. Yes, yeah, and yeah. she's like just broke up with her jock boyfriend. She comes to the party and they're there, and it's like <laughs> oh, you know, she's the hot girl in yeah, school, yep. and then she ends up like, like doesn't she end up? It's like somehow they the letter the high, high school stereotypes. Yes, yes, you know, and she like hooks up with like the the not cool kid I don't, I don't remember yeah I yeah it's well. but anyways yeah long long story short that kid from looks at that um what's the other movie that was okay you know how in the 90s there was a uh, um so many movies that came out they were like double movies like yeah. same script yes yes like, like she's all that and yeah all and like armageddon armageddon and, uh whatever the other one was that was also armageddon like the core or uh no Oh, you gotta remember this. You're killing me now. I know. Oh man, <laughs> this doesn't make for good TV. There's there. one with Elijah Wood, and I can't think of it. That was like the end of the world too. It's like about a meteor. I can't oh, Deep Impact. Think. Yes, Deep Impact. See, boom. It's deep Impact. Deep Impact. And, but I don't know if that was the same as Armageddon. No, and then the like Bruce Willis launches himself. Yes. Like yeah. And then there was a Will Smith one that was like similar. Uh, Independence Day. That's what. Boom. There you go. There we go. Check you out, dude. <laughs> anyway, I feel like there's a can't hardly wait and another one that was like that. Uh, idle ha idle hands, hardly? maybe. Maybe. Well, I feel like maybe can't hardly wait was like the. They were trying to go for like the dazed and confused. Yeah. But Seth like, Green was in that too. Yeah, I never really liked him. Yeah. He was... No disrespect, Seth Green. Uh. I'm sure he's tight. No disrespect, <laughs> Seth. Like, keep getting them, keep getting them Family Guy checks. <laughs> I'm sure they're good. Yeah. 
uh, well, let's let's uh, a little bit off the subject here, but um, you have you just played on the past three eleven cruise. You've played on a M- Michael Fronte cruise. Um, did you ever think Art like? Didn't play on that. Yeah, that's right. You, yeah, you, it was just you. Um, right, but uh, and I know you jammed with Full Service and whatnot, and mm-hmm. you're friends yeah. with those guys. Uh, yeah, they're great dudes. Um, would you ever have thought like, you know, twenty years ago that you'd ever be playing on a boat? <laughs> uh, twenty years ago. Hmm. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, I would have been down, though. Yeah, like, oh, totally. Definitely would have been down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at that time, I, like, that time, the dudes, like, the guys I grew up with in Long Beach and shit, we would break into houses to jam. <laughs> like, empty apartment buildings. We Because all we had was, like, combo amps. Oh, nice. So, like, you know, it would ha- it had to be a specific, like, apartment that's, like, the power is, like goes throughout the mm-hmm. building you know what i mean because because yeah. or we got had to get extension cords which we had like a few mm-hmm. run them out the window go out to like the neighbor because a lot of people have the little the ones where you the lift little, yeah yeah outside. oh yeah steel yeah hell yeah and so we'd break into the house so we could jam oh nice you know because can't this is like middle of the night type mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. we never did any like real damage you know yeah yeah we were pretty adept little little kids so at the time and we were playing like we would just play like hip-hop it was just like it was basically just Joe and I and a couple other dudes like dude they would just be you know we had like two MCs because mm-hmm. they didn't have anything written <laughs> yeah it was yeah, just yeah. freestyles just freestyle. and then Joe and I would play drums and bass and it would be like amps on like one mm-hmm. you know <laughs> super quiet so that we could like try and go all night and it's like you know when you're 15 you like are sharing like four beers so, you know like we spent like you know, you know what I mean? we'd like like go we'd be like oh, so mike's hard lemonade oh hell no 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 not, not in those days you, you get kicked out of the jam for good if yeah. you had mike's hard lemonade we were kind of mean kids too like if you didn't if if you weren't getting down like so you had the amp to one, never do eleven. Spinal tap. No, this is a good call, but I mean, I wanted to turn to eleven. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but you know, we were minors, yeah. jamming, like breaking and entering. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, for good purposes, you know, to make music mm-hmm. because we had nowhere, we didn't have any money, we had nowhere to jam like at night. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I always like when I first started going on tour, I always envied the kids like in the Midwest and the East Coast that had basements. Yeah. It's in California, like, you know, none of us have basements. Yeah. So all like the bands in California either jam like in a in in someone's living room or like in a garage. It's mainly like garages, you know, like yeah, we, yeah. like R X started in a garage. And um <clears throat> so it's like come nighttime, unless you have very supportive parents who are down to just throw down the ten G's to soundproof the garage. The garage yeah. Like you you know, it's either no jams or got a break into some abandoned abandoned buildings yeah hell yeah man we took matters into our own hands <laughs> i have a i gotta tell you the story i wish joe was here <laughs> there's one time <laughs> somehow we had like a bunch of like newcastle and guinness and shit like that and but it was they were like half i feel like we went to like some older kids party or something mm-hmm. and we were like coming up on you know beers and we poured them into a giant bowl mm-hmm. like all the beer mm-hmm. you know oh god that's because it was like you know like when you're 15 it's like some it's like it's like gold it's like liquid gold mm-hmm. you know and so we had this like seriously it was like a salad bowl mm-hmm. like no no joke yeah like yeah. metal salad bowl and we were like <laughs> passing around drinking like and it was like it was pretty good because it was like you know new, it was like a black and tan and whatever what's a new what's a new castle and guinness yep. together uh a black i couldn't tell it so it was like a black and tan pail, and it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And it was funny because the cops, the cops came to the the door, and we all stuck out the back, <laughs> and then they eventually got in. And I, I always, <laughs> I wish I could go like talk to them as grown men because they must have just they rolled into the room. There's nobody there, but obviously there've been people there, and there was just a bowl <laughs> of random, random beer, beer. <laughs> just a bowl. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And like the back door open, and like you know. Footsteps exactly. leading away. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it was a good time. <clears throat> um, anyway, so to answer your question, yeah. bringing it all back, mm-hmm. um, 20 years ago, I would not have thought so, but I would have been down. Yeah. It's yeah. paradise, man. It's awesome. Uh, we cool, Kaylin. Keep rolling. 
can roll as long as you want. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you too. I mean, since you've jammed with uh, full service, uh, would you guys ever go on? Do you think you're ever going to go on tour in the future with those guys? I don't know. I'll have to see. I'd love to. Yeah, they're great dudes. I like how they like to play so many sports. They're very sporty individuals. Very. They're, all, they're all in good shape. And uh, it's nice to go on tour. We're usually pretty sedentary lifestyle and get to play soccer or basketball or whatever. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they actually just came out their new album. But um, now I have a fan question for you. Uh, we have Renee Rodriguez of Summit, Illinois, asks. It's actually a two-part question, but uh, when is the, the next "The Sound of Animals Fighting" record coming out? No idea, Renee. That's not. It's not even in the works. All right. Sorry, buddy. It's all right, Renee. Don't cry. And uh, the second part is: Can you please play some live since RX and Anthony Green are on are in the same building tonight? Mm, might be able to make that happen. Yeah. All right, all right, that's good. <laughs> there you go, Renee. You should come to the show and see what happens. There you go. Um, now, this is uh, another complete uh, random question, but who would be your dream collaboration, alive or dead? Alive or dead? Mm-hmm. Nah, it's so broad, bro. Too broad. Living or dead? Nah, man, who would be, who would you would love to collab with? Um, oh, dude. It blows my brain up. Makes my brain blow up. Um, mm, I mean, I'd want to jam with Jimi Hendrix, obviously, because he's my favorite guitar player of all time. Um, especially like the Electric Ladyland jams when Electric mm. Ladyland was being built. Eddie, him and Eddie Kramer were building it in Manhattan, especially Manhattan in the 60s. That would have been awesome. And, um, oh man, that would be great. Uh, there's so many people, dude. Just don't check out that uh, Jimi Hendrix. DJ uh, Premier, dude. Oh, DJ Premier. Like, uh, as soon as this interview is done, I'm going to think of <laughs> like, think all the, <laughs> like all the. Like, all the. I had to put you on the spot, all man. All the coolest stuff, you know? Like, <laughs> um, Levon, you know what? I would have loved to jam with Levon Helm. I'm only thinking of dead people. But, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of uh, Premier's alive. I'd be down. You know, that'd be cool. Um, I'm trying to think of bands nowadays or dudes nowadays like dudettes <laughs> it's okay uh, i don't know i'm trying to think like who who really gets down as far as like you know as far as uh just jamming getting down yeah like who like i would say like mastodon to be cool that would i guess that would be cool yeah i love metal i'm down with that yeah. um i'm just trying to think like nowadays as far as like like musicians like it's not really like jamming and inviting people in. You know, there's not that like like the Laurel Canyon scene in the 80s or like Lee Von Helm had his spot in Woodstock where he'd have people every Monday. Like, man, I mean, that would be great to start that kind of thing yeah. again. That would be, that'd be really cool. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to jam with Ellie Goulding. Oh, cool. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see you, Ellie. Let's go. Cool. Let's jam. <laughs> And, uh, well, I have one final question for you, sir. Right. I ask every band this. Is and I, Golding? Golding. They're Golding? Eli, Gou Eli Goulding, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, well, I'm a huge movie buff. And uh, if you had to compare our Bandits to a movie, what movie would it be and why? Oh, that's so heavy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Sunday and I'm giving you, like, these... Brutal. Mmm. <laughs> Take your time. It's okay, ladies and gentlemen. Be patient. Is it really live? It's really live. No, it's not live. Oh, okay. But we're going to put this up, though. Cut this shit Oh, out. yeah. You're good, dude. Oh, if it's not live. Dude, you guys... Do you want No, what I'm saying I is... Have, like, you. one minute left on all these cameras. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should cut. Let me think about it. It's got to be a movie that evolves. We're like a cult classic that... Never really got huge, but like... It was... Dude, we're kind of Don... We're kind of Donnie Darko-y. Ooh, but, but, yeah. Th but... But we don't have a Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> because Jake Jake is just like he's a megastar. He's he's like such a handsome hunky. And hopefully, guy. hopefully, you don't have the Patrick Swayze in that movie. What do you mean? Hopefully, don't. Exactly. Hopefully, you don't. No, no, no. no. Hopefully, do. Oh, you know his no. character though. His I character know. in the movie. I know what we are. I know. <laughs> okay. All right. Rx Bandits is the fucking point break of bands. Oh. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Hell yeah. Finally. Anthony Kiedis shoots his uh, toe off in that movie. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. They're, they they re- they remade that. Dude, it's a it's a goddamn travesty that they did that. I know. It's Keanu like Keanu Reeves isn't even dead, dude. Patrick, I know. Patrick Swayze's body is still warm. <laughs> Oh, I mean that's like you know if you remade like Jaws, you just can't do it. There's no, some you movies can't you can't it. just no. leave it. No, and but you're right. But but yeah. here's the thing: is that now like in Hollywood they remake everything because there's no, no more ideas, no original no. ideas anymore. Nope. And and I, I feel like I feel like in general creativity, like it, this is a big thing in like the in the music industry is like people are so afraid to champion real creativity because they're afraid to lose their own job. So everyone just is trying to jump on like. One risk taker who who like does something and it becomes something that everyone jumps on that band bandwagon. I mean, yeah, that's me. That's like the major label. It's not something you know. We're, well, in, a, we're well, in a whole different world, so th- that doesn't pertain. To I me. mean, that's like the director Del Toro who did like Pan's Labyrinth. He's For doing sure. these new movies now. His older movies are great, but now he has these huge companies. They're like, no, you can't do that. You're gonna do it this way. You know, yeah. special effects and all that, and it kind of moves away from the actual story. It's yeah. all about the story, man. It's all about the story. Think about like stuff like like Back to the Future. You know what I mean? It's like Clockwork about, Orange. Clockwork Orange. There's so many random cool ideas. Random cool. Dying Dark is a really cool idea. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love any time traveling. It's fantastic. <clears throat> oh, that's me not, too. Yeah. Me too. Oh, have you seen Terminator Genesis? No, I I gave up oh. on the Terminator. Is oh. it is it bad? Wait, wait, is that the one? No, that's, I'm thinking the one with Christian Bale. That was the... That one was horrible. That one was bad. That, I saw, I, mean, I, I turned it off. Christian Bale's, like... Christian Bale's one of the most overrated. I'm just going to say, it. he's, he's a, one of the most overrated. And he's guys. one of the most hardest people to work with, I heard. He's a yeah. dick on set. I, mean, I never met him, so I'm not going <laughs> yeah. to make any judgments. <laughs> Sorry. Judgments on Christian or anything, but, <laughs> but, like, I mean, he was great in American Psycho because, uh, like, I feel like that's him. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But... Anyway, Terminator Genesis is worth watching for the pure stupidity of it. The t- and Arnold's back, and, and he, I, he I want to spoil everything and tell tell people like how ridiculous it is. Cause like Khaleesi, you know Amelia Clark, who's just beautiful. I want to jam with Amelia Clark. Amelia <laughs> Clark. That, that's who I want to okay. collaborate. With. Yes, I know you're talking about. <laughs> that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I bet she can play. Yeah. I bet she can play a mean, mean uh, <laughs> banjo. But um. She she's she's Sarah Connor in the new one. Okay, and um, they have like the T one thousand. He's like back, but he's like the Asian T one thousand, which is pretty tight. He's like pretty, you know, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. There's multiple Arnolds from different time okay. periods, and the timeline makes no sense, <laughs> like at all. It's like they came in. Like, you ever, did you ever see that Key and Peele sketch where where they like making fun of how they made up Gremlins two? No, no, no. Uh, Keaton feels awesome, but yeah. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, I'm bummed that they, I'm bummed that they called it, but I, I respect them for going out on top. Right on. But um, anyway, I'm sure. Cool. So a uh, point break. I could talk forever. Yeah, arc bands is the point break of bands. Wait, how's that work? You know what I mean. The PB of we bands. We choose one. We're point break. You got you got me saying it before. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> before it was better. <laughs> well, hey, Matt, man, thank you so much for doing this. I, I really appreciate it, man. You're very appreciate welcome. it. Wheeler's Weekend Jams live and direct. Make sure to check out our website at wheelersweekendjams.com and also check us out on our new Patreon page at patreon.com slash WWJ.